All right, folks, welcome back. Now that we've had our review of the mole concept, it's time to move on. We're going to talk today about finding something called percent composition. So now that we know how to find the formula of a compound, we should be able to calculate something called its mass percent. And that would be the mass percent percentages of the elements that make up that compound. Now, it's convenient just to start with one mole of the compound. So let's say I wanted to find the mass percent of each element in the compound sodium sulfate. So first, we have to find the molecular weight. So for that, let's see, we have sodium, and we have two of those. We have a sulfur, and we have four oxygens, don't we? And let's look at the mass of each of these. Sodium to the nearest hundredth is 22.99 grams per mole. Sulfur is 32.06 grams per mole. And oxygen, boy, we use that enough. We've memorized that, haven't we? It's 16.00. So 22.99 times 2 is 45.98. OK. And 32.06 for my sulfur. And 4 times 16.00 is 64.00 for my oxygens. So the weight of this would be 6, 7, 8, 12. Hopefully I'm doing this math right. 5, 8, uh, hopefully I get 142.04 grams per mole. You guys can check my work at home, which I'm sure some of you will. So um, of this 142.04 grams per mole, we want to find the percentage, percentage of it that's sodium, sulfur, and oxygen. So that won't be that hard. So to find the percentage of it that's sodium, let's find the mass of sodium. And you'll see I was a little lazy here. I round that off to the nearest tenth. Shame on me. Um, and we're going to divide that by 142.04. Then we'll multiply it by 100. And since I rounded it off to the nearest tenth, I'm only going to give myself three significant figures in my answer. So 2 times 23 um, divided by 142.04 is uh, 0.32385. But we have to multiply that by 100 to change it to a percentage and round it off to three sig figs. So I get 32.4% sodium. Okay, let's find the percentage of sulfur the same way. So we're going to take the mass of my sulfur, 32.06, divided by the mass of the compound, 142.04 times 100. And let's see what that is. Um, 22.57. We're just going to go to 0 0.6 just to be consistent with the answer up above to the nearest or to three significant figures. And then we'll do the same for oxygen. We have four oxygens and they weigh 16.00 grams per mole each divided by the mass of the compound times 100. And let's see what we get there. Um, 45.1%. So we found the percentage by, by mass of each element in that compound. Now, there is a way to find the percentage of the last element in the compound pretty easily. Because if you do this, we should end up with 100% uh, for our total. So let's check. 4 plus 6 plus 1. Well, that's 11. Carry the 1. 3 plus uh, 2 is uh, 5 plus 5 more is 0, and then we'll carry the 1. Th 3 plus 2 is 5, 6, seven. so we do get 100.1. Now remember, we can be off in that last digit, kiddos, because of rounding. So our percentages should add up to 100%, and once again, we can be off in that very, very last digit. So another way to find the percentage of the last element is if my total percentage has to equal 100, can't I take away the percentage of it that was oxygen and then take away the percentage of it that was sulfur? 
and I should be left with the percentage of oxygen, and these two percentages should match. Once again, we can be off in the last digit because that's our estimated digit. So 100 minus 32.4 minus 22.6 gives us 45.0. Yeah, so that works. Once again, I know I've said this several times already, but we can be off in that very last digit. As you recall, that's our estimated digit. And since we rounded these off to three sig figs, my answer here has three sig figs, and I am off just a little bit in that last digit. Okay, so percent composition is not too horribly difficult. Why don't you try example seven without my help, and then come back to the video, and we'll see how you did. All right, welcome back. So for this one, we're going to have to find the formula first because we need to know the formula to find the, the weight of the compound. So we have scandium-3. That means it's SC with the 3 plus charge. And nitrate, if you remember, is a polyatomic ion. That's NO3 negative. So the formula is SC and then parentheses NO3 and we'll need three of those, won't we, to balance out the charge. So let's find the molecular weight of this compound. So we have scandium. We have uh, one scandium, by the way. We have three nitrogens, remember, because this three over here, we triple everything that's inside the parentheses. And oxygen, we have nine of those. So let's find the weight of the compound. So scandium's atomic mass is 44.96 so that would be 44.96 over there nitrogen's atomic mass to the nearest hundredth is 14.01 so 14.01 times 3 gives me um, uh, 42.03 doesn't it? Yep. And oxygen's atomic mass is 16.0, and that gives us 144.00. So we get 9, 9, 6, 10, carry the 1, 4, 8, 12, 13, carry the 1. Hopefully I did that right, 230.99 grams per mole. So now we can find the percentage of each element in that compound. So we'll do the percent scandium first, and it looks like my scandium makes up 44.96 grams per mole out of 230.99. Uh, Multiply that by 100, and that should give us our percentage scandium. So 44.96 divided by 230.99 gives me 19.46% scandium. Percentage of nitrogen, it looks like my nitrogen makes up 42.03 grams out of 230.99 grams per mole. So let's see what percentage that is. Um, that gives me 18.20% nitrogen. And the oxygen would be whatever's left over from 100. So 100 minus 19.46, that's my percentage scandium, minus 18.20. And let's see what I'm left with there. So we'll take away 19.46 from 100, and I'll take 18.20 from 100, and I get 62. 0.34% oxygen by weight. Okay, so that's called percent composition, and that's actually a fairly common calculation. So I expect you guys to be able to do it and handle it pretty easily. Remember, the first thing you need to do is, of course, write the formula if it's not given, then find the weight of the compound, and then you just simply need to find the percentage by mass of each element in that compound, just like we did here. So here's a little formula for you in case you need that in your notes. Now, the next thing I want to do for you is talk about empirical formulas. 
We actually did a lab on this recently. If you remember, we found the empirical formula of magnesium oxide. And that was even before we did this unit. So you should be able to handle this pretty well. So let's talk, let's review a little bit about what an empirical formula is. An empirical formula of a compound gives the smallest whole number ratio between the number of atoms of different elements in a compound. For example, benzene has the formula C6H6. That's its molecular formula. The empirical formula would be CH. It's the lowest whole number ratio. Another example. Hydrogen peroxide has the formula H2O2. That is its molecular formula. The actual ratio is 2 to 2. But the empirical formula would be the lowest whole number ratio, and for hydrogen peroxide, that would be HO or 1 to 1. Now, sometimes a compound's empirical formula is identical to its molecular formula. So, sodium chloride has the molecular formula, NaCl, and its empirical formula, the lowest whole number ratio, is also NaCl. Now, the empirical formula of a compound can be determined by finding the percent composition of the compound. So, what this problem, or what empirical formulas turns out to be, is the opposite, actually, of finding percent by weight. Here, I'm going to give you the percent by weight of each element in the compound, and we're going to work backwards and find the empirical formula of the compound. So, let's try example 8. We have 46.56% iron and 53.44% sulfur in this compound. From this data, let's find the empirical formula. So, I like to assume we have 100 grams of the compound because it makes the math really easy. 46.56% of 100 would be 46.56 grams of iron and 53.44% sulfur out of 100 grams of the compound would be 53.44 grams of sulfur. In reality, you can assume any mass you want. I could assume 37 grams of the compound, but then I would have to find 46.5% of that mass and 53.44% of that mass. So I like to assume 100 because it makes the math just a little bit easier. Okay? All right, let's change colors here. I'm in the mood to change, so there we go. So, the empirical formula is the smallest whole number mole ratio. So if I have grams, we're, we get to convert to moles, which we just practiced doing in the previous video. So, 46.56 grams of iron. Let's multiply by a line. Put grams of iron on the bottom. Moles of iron on top. Put a 1 by mole. Let's see what the atomic mass of iron is. 55.85. Okay, and this will give us moles of iron in just a minute. Let's do the same with sulfur. We'll multiply by a line. Put grams of sulfur on the bottom. Moles of sulfur on top and put a 1 by mole. And the atomic mass of sulfur is, oh, we just looked that up, 32 0.06 grams per mole. So let's find out how many moles of each element we have in this mystery compound. So 46.56 divided by 55.85 gives us to four significant figures uh, 0 0.833 37 moles of iron. For sulfur, we're going to take 53.44 divided by 32.06, and we get 1.667 moles of sulfur. Now, obviously, these are not small whole numbers. They're small numbers, but they're not small whole numbers. So the way we find the smallest whole number ratio is we divide by the lowest number of moles of the elements in the compound. So if I have 0.8337 moles of iron and 1.667 moles of sulfur, I'll divide each of these by 0.8337. 
that gives me one iron, and 0.8337 would give me two sulfurs. So my lowest whole number mole ratio is one to two. So the formula would be Fe1S2. Now normally we would just write that as FeS. Okay, that's how we find empirical formula. So let's do one more here. Why don't you try it? So pause the video, try this one on your own, and then come back to the video to see how you did. All right, welcome back. So we have a compound that's 36.5% sodium, 25.4% sulfur, and the rest of it's oxygen. Hmm, the rest of it's oxygen. Well, let's see, wouldn't that be 100.0% minus those other percentages? And wouldn't that give me the percentage of oxygen? So we'll take away 36.5% from the sodium, and we'll take away 25.4% from the sulfur, and whatever's left over will be our oxygen. So let's do that. 100 minus 36.5 minus 25.4, I get 38.1% oxygen. So now we have our percentage by weight. Now that we have that percentage, we can go ahead and find the lowest whole number mole ratio. So we'll assume we have 100 grams of the compound. That would give us 36.5 grams of sodium, 25.4 grams of sulfur, and 38.1 grams of oxygen. Now, of course, to find the lowest whole number mole ratio, it makes sense that we have to convert each of these to moles, doesn't it? So we'll put grams of sodium on the bottom for this one and get into moles of sodium. Put grams of sulfur on the bottom of this one and get into moles of sulfur. And grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. Put a one by mole. Sodium is 22.99 grams per mole. Sulfur, 32.06. And oxygen, 16.00. You can look those up on the periodic table, kiddos. So this will give us moles of sodium, moles of sulfur, and moles of oxygen. So we'll go to our calculator. 36.5 divided by 22.99 is uh, 1.59 moles of sulfur, 20, or excuse me, sodium. 25.4 divided by 32.06 gives us 0.792 moles of sulfur, and 38.1 divided by 16.00 gives us 2.38 moles of oxygen. Now let's not just round those numbers off to the nearest whole number. That's not how we do it. To find the ratio, let's go ahead and divide by the smallest number of moles, which is 0.792. Wouldn't you agree? So let's see what we get. We get 1 for sulfur. For sodium, 1.59 divided by 0.792 is, I'll be darned, 2. And for oxygen, 2.38 divided by 0.792 is 3. Huh. So the lowest whole number of mole ratio is 2 to 1 to 3. So let's write the formula now. Na2... S1, but we don't need to write the 1 down, O3. So the empirical formula for that compound would be Na2SO3. Its name, of course, would be sodium sulfite. Okay? All right. Let's stop there for the day. We're going to do another practice one on the next video, and then we'll get into something called molecular formulas. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.